New York's classic rock, Q1043. Good morning, like everything else during this pandemic, the holiday season has completely been upended, particularly with the Salvation Army, the Red Kettles. Well, we're not going to have that this year, but the thing is, their campaign for the holidays actually started last month. Joining me this morning, Major Kevin Stoops. How are you? First of all, how are you doing in this pandemic? I'm doing well. I've been uh, keeping healthy and, of course, uh, safe and uh, grateful that you have me on the show today. Well, grateful to help out because the need is so much more than it ever has been in our lifetime. So, Tell us how things are different this year, how we can help out, and then let's talk about the need. Very good. Yeah, things are very much different. I think uh, everyone in your listening audience has experienced the effects of uh, COVID and the virus. And um, we at uh, the front line of uh, service with the Salvation Army are seeing uh, just a greater demand. Uh, People facing unemployment, financial uh, issues, food insecurity especially. And uh, the Salvation Army really has a desire, a mission, to meet that human need. And um, we're, uh, in looking ahead to the holiday season, we're seeing just a looming uh, challenge as uh, this holiday season approaches us. How can people help out if we don't have the red kettles? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question because uh, in this te- technological age, um, We have also at the Salvation Army had to get away from the dropping cash in a bucket, uh, which just isn't practical this year. There's going to be very few of those out there. When you see them, please support the Red Kettle, as is a Christmas tradition for over 130 years. But we've set up uh, virtual ways to give. Um, uh, Those of you who are tech savvy, you can text GIVE NYC to 41444. That's been set up. You can do that even today. In addition, you can find out more information as well as donate on SalvationArmyNY.org. And this is a way that you can support us. I'll tell you what, if you walk by a, a, a Salvation Army kettle, I have a sign even in my office here today, you'll see Kettle Pay on there. You can just uh, tap your phone to that logo and that'll set up a donation for you as well. These are all the uh, high, higher tech ways that people can support the Salvation Army this holiday season because somehow we got to keep the bells ringing and uh, rescue Christmas, not only for the Salvation Army, that's not the point. We want to rescue Christmas for those who are in need this season. And uh, so that's, those are ways that you can do that in a very practical way. How do people actually find out about the programs you have if they are in need? Yeah, it's a, that's another great question because um, we're not just in one location. Um, in our region, we have 38 Salvation Army locations. Uh, the Salvation Army serves in every zip code within New York City, as well as um, the outer uh, counties, Rockland County, Westchester County, Long Island. And so a good uh, Google search of the Salvation Army nearest you will get you to one of those nearby locations. And then um, a phone call can get you um, a way to um, uh, put your name uh, for service. Um, we have, if it's food service that you need, then uh, there's several ways that we can do that. Grab and go. You can just come right by the Salvation Army and they'll have a food box available right outside. They can hand it right to you. Um, they can deliver it to your house. We, during COVID, um, the Salvation Army has supplied 5 million meals to area residents during this pandemic. Now in a normal year, we provide 3.5 million meals. So you can see the increase in just the past six months. And one of those delivery systems that we utilize is actually dropping the food box off at your apartment or house, delivering it right to your doorstep in a very contactless way so that we do that very safely. You don't have to show need. You don't have to show need. You just have to express that need. Um, now, if you're, if you're applying for or asking for toy assistance for your children or that, there might be some very basic questions of um, name, address, uh, information, children's ages, children's sizes for clothing, 
things like that. But pretty much so that when you um, are making the phone call, the assumption is you're in need, you're in need. And what we're seeing this year is something different than we've ever seen before, is that people um, have, who have normally been our donors, who have been very generous to us, who have given monthly gifts or put money into the kettle or during the year have given to the Salvation Army. What we're seeing this year is they're the ones that are asking for assistance with food. The um, demand on a family because of um, no schooling, uh, maybe they depended on the school to provide breakfast and lunch for their children. And now all of a sudden that food pressure is on, uh, on them as a household. Then we're seeing people um, uh, flip from being um, a donor to now they're being the one that is in need of our, our services. And the Salvation Army desires greatly to meet that demand. And in order to do that, we will need people's help. What are you seeing in terms of homelessness during the pandemic? Yeah, homelessness is a grand issue. Now, I'll tell you what, we were already doing a large homeless uh, service even before the pandemic. Um, we have a program at the Salvation Army that runs year round called the Social Service uh, Response Unit. These are mobile vans that would drive around New York City and uh, outside that would identify people who are um, experiencing homelessness and we would provide them service, whether it can be as basic as a warm pair of socks to referral to shelters. Now, the pandemic hits and people, it's very unsafe to be out on the street. Um, maybe they don't have proper uh, personal protective equipment. So we've engaged in a, uh, several factors, uh, facets of service to those experiencing homeless. One is to get them equipped with proper face mask and even uh, personal protective equipment if they need it but referrals to shelters. The, the shelter system has changed completely because we, it's not safe to go into a congregate shelter where you have eight people in a room. Uh, it's just not a, a, a good way to do it. So the shelter system has changed drastically, especially in New York City. Now, I would say that the, you have the same amount of homeless as we've had even pre-pandemic. But you know as well as I do what's looming on January 1st when the eviction moratorium expires is that people who have not been able to pay rent but who have been protected, they've been able to stay in their apartment. When all of a sudden the rent comes due and there's six, seven, eight months of rent due, we at the Salvation Army know very well that this uh, issue of homelessness is going to increase. There's going to be people that just will not be able to, to, to stay in their apartment and they're not gonna have a place to go. Now, Salvation Army can't do that by itself, but we're actually working with a lot of partners with homelessness here in New York City, especially, but even outside, to make sure that um, any funding that the CARES Act is available, any donations are set aside, but also just facilities, places where people can go safely and uh, have a roof over their head. This is a very challenging issue and one that uh, coming in the middle of winter, January 1st, middle of winter, is going to be facing, um, facing us. I'm speaking with Major Kevin Stoops of the Salvation Army. What are you hearing, Major, in terms of what's going on in Washington, in terms of stopping this catastrophic situation in, in just a few months? Yeah, the... This, this one has sort of uh, been sort of uh, a can that gets kicked down the road, right? It started out as a moratorium until October 1. Then it sort of got moved to January 1. Eventually, uh, what we're hearing, our Salvation Army headquarters for the nation is located right outside Washington, D.C. So we do have access to the information that they're hearing out of um, Washington. And really what we're hearing is that... Um, what we're hearing is that this problem will be bigger than the funding that's been made available. The funding in the CARES Act has been uh, made available to uh, municipalities, to government um, uh, bodies, and uh, Salvation Army and other nonprofits are able to um, advocate for people to utilize those dollars. But it's very clear that the dollars that have been made available up to this point um, 
will not meet the need fully of what's coming um, if, uh, when this eviction moratorium ends and people are facing uh, a choice. They can face a choice. I can feed my family or I can house my family. I can um, provide medical care for my family or I can house my family. And in some cases, that choice is going to be drastic because they won't be able to house their family. The Salvation Army, even now, is working hard at putting systems in place and resources in place. And that's why it's important that we get this message out to even your listeners so that people know how to support the Salvation Army and what their donations are gonna to go to. Even now we're putting resources in place, case managers in place that can then advocate for people who are in need as well as get them assistance that they need. Could the governors in the tri-state area stop this by extending the moratorium on evictions? I think that, um, for, for me as a, a representative of the Salvation Army, that would be a, a question that could be easily answered yes, but they have a lot more information than I do. And one of the concerns that would be placed on that is then what happens to the landlord that is also trying to survive, but needs the rental income to be able to meet their bills or their utility costs, their property tax costs. And so there really is a domino effect is that um, one definitely impacts the other, and so the governors see a bigger picture than we as the Salvation Army who are maybe more on the ground level. But no matter what, from landlord to renter, uh, everyone's facing that same pressure of how do, how do we make, make ends meet? How are you fixed for volunteers? I mean, we're in a pandemic. What yeah. is the situation? Yeah, volunteers have been a challenge. Um, we have seen tremendous heroes rise up and say, um, we see the work that you're doing at the Salvation Army. We see you packing those food boxes, delivering those food boxes, uh, serving people out on the street with food because they're in need, and we wanna help out. And they have joined us. Uh, now, any volunteer that comes by, we will make sure that they're uh, safe, that we uh, distribute any assistance we give in a very safe way with personal protective equipment. But we've seen people rise up and say, hey, even in the midst of this, we want to help out. And they've done that. In the same time, we've also seen less volunteers. There's just a very natural response saying, listen, we have a, a shelter in place order. We're going to keep that. And even though you're an essential work and essential service, um, we really can't help you out at this time. So we've seen both. As we approach the holidays where we have a lot of volunteers help us out, setting up toy distribution centers and delivering toys to people and making sure food is available. The demand for volunteers will be high. We anticipate that we'll have the same thing. Um, there will be heroes that will rise up to say, we'll help you out. And then there'll be others that will be a little bit more reluctant and that's okay. Um, so please be aware that um, um, if you're able to help us out and desire to please volunteer because we could use that assistance. And of course, you're accepting donations. You can text an amount to Give NYC to 41444. That's Give NYC, texted to 41444. You, you must have these overall discussions. How long does the Salvation Army see this dire need continuing? We see the, the immediate need has been profound. Uh, when we did the pivot in March, um, immediately we changed our delivery system from a congregate feeding system, uh, soup kitchen model to a grab and go. We, we uh, set up food boxes and uh, arranged to deliver them to people's uh, places of housing. And we saw that profound change immediately. If, if a place was serving 100 meals, they were all of a sudden serving 150. If a place was serving 300 meals, they were serving 500 meals. And so that, that hit us really fast and really early. And that has continued up until now. Now, so there's been a, a little bit of decline, I would say, but not much. And our expectation is that all the way through the holidays, we will see a continual rise in people looking for services from the Salvation Army. Now, I can't 
my focus is really up through uh, New Year's, so I can only try to guess what the winter will look like. My anticipation is that we will be at, people will um, be demanding a lot of service from the Salvation Army, and we're going to do our best to meet that demand. Our desire is to meet human need. So if there's a need, we want to meet that. And again, if you are in a position where you can help out, yes. please text Give NYC. Text that to 41444. I thank you, Major Kevin Stoops, uh, Les, for all the good work that you're doing. Q104.3. New York's classic rock, Q104.3.